Hello, welcome to the start of another reading vlog. It's Tuesday, September 3rd, which is the day of many releases, and I have some packages to haul. There may or may not be many books waiting for me. I was so excited when I came home and I had all these packages. My favorite thing is walking in the door and seeing a package for myself. I just love getting mail. Picked up my mail a few hours ago and I haven't opened it yet because I'm scared because today is Dark Dawn release day. And when I open it, that means I have to start it. And I'm terrified. I'm honestly terrified. Pure fear. So let's get started on opening these packages. This one is from Madison over at Princess of Paperback. And let's see what she sent me. Ooh, it's bubble wrapped. <laughs> oh. And I knew that this was coming, but I got her copy of A Treason of Thorns. Oh, and she gave me a bookmark in here. And um, yeah, so this is an arc that she recently read and she passed it along to me to read. So I'm excited to get to this one. I'm not sure which is the scarier package. Maybe this one is the less scary package. Yes, this is the less scary package because it doesn't have Dark Dawn, so it's less scary. <laughs> What's this? Could this be Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? If you can believe it, I actually don't have a hardcover copy of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, which is just crazy to me. I only have hardcover starting at Order of Phoenix and I lost the dust jacket of Order of Phoenix. However, my sister has like a perfect condition copy of Order of Phoenix and she doesn't like really like Harry Potter, so I might just steal that from her. Don't tell her. But yeah, I am... Um, want to reread this soon i ordered this on september 1st because it was back to hogwarts day and i'm like i really just want to reread harry potter and annotate it and then i was looking at all the harry potter books in the bookstore and i'm like how has it been so many years and i don't own the first four books in hardcover that's just bizarre to me so oh wow god i love harry potter so much just special memories and then I also got Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets in hardcover as well. It's so weird to me seeing these in hardcover because I like only ever had them in the soft covers and the soft covers are like destroyed. So it's so cool like seeing the back illustrations too because I never really like saw that on my final copies. But oh my god, I can just tell that this reread is going to be magical. So yeah, stay tuned for when that happens and then as I like go through it, the series we're reading, I will probably buy the other two books that I need and then just put my paperbacks, like I'm not gonna throw them out or anything, but bring them back to my parents' house and just have them there so that they don't take up the space here. And then I also got a Tombow dual brush pen in black just to have, I have like the smaller tip brush pen in black, but I kind of want the bigger tip in case I like, want to color stuff in. So I got that, and then here is the package that is the Doomsday package. Okay, so we are really saving the most scary for last. First of all, I have There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. I just read the arc for this one and I fell in love with it. It is a fantastic, fantastic debut novel. I just put up my review on Goodreads and I'm so excited to have a finished copy. It's so pretty. This is such an awesome novel about basically, oh, interesting. I just had an epiphany that the seven prophetic cities are based on the seven wonders of the world after seeing the map and seeing all of the cities having like, the temples of Pallas is like the Athens thing. That's so smart. That's so smart. Wow. Okay, cool. But anyways, there is these prophets that rule and then they disappeared 100 years ago and now there's a final prophecy and basically like any of these five main characters could be the prophet and they are the last prophet that will either plunge the world into ruin or save it. And then last but not least is my child. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Dark Dawn, oh my God. Wow, the signed first edition. She's so pretty. This is definitely my favorite of the US covers like by a landslide, but I've grown to love the US covers. The like stark whiteness of them, I really enjoy. It's so weird to think that like this page was once in Jay Kristoff's house because he signed all of them like 
finished all of them. Oh my god, okay. This, this, like, the beginning part, like, gets me. He's so sassy. He goes, but before the smut and butchery begin in earnest, allow me one final refresher for those with memories as reliable as your narrator. And then we can get on with killing our murderous little bitch. Yes. I fucking love Jay Crystal. That is, ugh, it's literally like I'm not going to be okay after. And it's probably going to take me a long time to read. So this is probably going to be a Dark Dawn reading vlog. Um, look at them together. Oh my god. This series is phenomenal. Oh, I'm emotional. I'm going to start reading. I'm definitely not going to get far, but um, that's that. And this is the start to what is probably going to be a very emotional vlog. <laughs> Okay, I've decided that this will be a spoiler-filled vlog because I just need to discuss what's happening. So literally, so far, all I've read is the Dramatis Personae. Uh, like underneath like all the gods, we have like Ah and sister wife Naya, and she was commanded to only bore him daughters. But then she bore him a son and was banished, and that's why night only comes for one week every two and a half years. Now, otherwise known as True Dark, but this line says... And as for what became of their son, well, gentle friend, I believe it's for time for some answers. And like the working theory is that the son created God's grave because it's literally like a city made of bones of him, like the ribs and all that. So we'll see, but we're finally going to get some answers. And the lore in this world is just fantastic. I made it all the way to page 14, but now it is time to sleep. <laughs> but what a great first chapter. I mean, it really hits the ground running. Hello, it's Friday now, and I have done absolutely no reading since Tuesday. I don't know, something about Never at uh, Dark Dawn, just like, I wanted to be able to immerse myself in it. I didn't have a lot of time Wednesday and Thursday, but I'm ready to just read the whole thing all weekend and just keep reading. So I just, I got home from work a little bit ago and then I just watched the BTS documentary, Burn the Stage on YouTube. I may or may not have gotten a YouTube premium trial for the express purpose of watching the movie. I'm just emotional because I've never been so emotionally invested in a band before and it's amazing. I just love the experience of being a BTS fan and you can just tell there are like no other artists in America and the way that they like connect with their fans and are like open and honest it's so it's so different than anything in our culture and I think that's what draws a lot of American fans to them even though they don't speak the language you know so it's and also their music is just amazing but this is a Dark Dawn vlog not a BTS vlog so I'm gonna get on to the bookish content but I just had to say that because it's on my mind because I I'm feeling emotional from it. That being said, I have some book mail. So this is an order from, uh, <laughs> I really thought I was gonna rip the whole thing and literally just this came off. <laughs> oh, that was so hard. Ah, it's here, what is this? Oh, and here it is, Serpent and Dove. Look at her, she's so pretty. I got the exclusive edition. I wasn't necessarily planning on getting the exclusive edition, but I had to place a Barnes & Noble order for some other stuff and I needed free shipping, so I'm like, I might as well get the Barnes & Noble edition, which this edition comes with an exclusive scene in the back, so I'm so excited to read this. I read this in my last reading vlog and absolutely fell in love with the story. This is like a very, very strong debut. Ooh, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. I absolutely adored this story and I'm so excited to have this book for my collection. Now I have a very exciting package from Penguin Teen. Oh, look at this packaging. So I requested an arc from Penguin Teen for the beautiful and look at this package. It begins with a look, it ignites with a kiss, it always ends in blood, the beautiful Renee Adier. Whoa, this is sick. Okay, I need to not ruin this package when I open it. This is not going well. Who trusted me? Here we are. Let's open it. Oh, whoa. 
Whoa, okay, wow. New Orleans, 1872. The darkest creatures of the underworld are embroiled in an angel field. And Celine and Sebastian, I'm trying to say it fancy, are at the very heart of it. Oh my God. Look at this wax sealed envelope. What the heck? Put it into like their boxes. It's so cool. And I'm so excited to read this. Thank you so much to Penguin Teen for sending this my way. I'm totally gonna get to it soon because I am anticipating it so much. I want another vampire story in my life. I may read this like beginning of October. Oh, it comes out in October, so soon because I am anticipating this one so, so much. And thank you for sending this beautiful box and letter. Like what the heck? It's the little details that make a big difference. So now onto actual Dark Dawn business. This is my little platypus, by the way. I'm just gonna put them here. Some books to shelve. I need to figure out where I'm gonna put these ones that I got earlier in this video. So I got to page 14 of Nevernight and I have all of these tabs. Well, you can't really see them, but I have a lot of tabs already. And I just can't wait to like go to town tabbing this book because I know it's gonna be an experience. And I also have this V bookmark because I have to read with my bias. And I, I hope my UK copies get here. This is just rambling but I'm gonna go read now. These books, even though I like read them, read them, read them, take me a long time to read because I just don't wanna miss any details. So I do read them a little bit slower. So totally I find, I literally started on Tuesday and I read The Dramatis Person Personae and one chapter. It was a really good one chapter, but like I definitely wanna make a lot of progress on this tonight. So I'll check back in later. I'm sorry, but page 31. We just got so meta. Oh my god. Oh my god. It goes, they find the book in the library. So right, like the library is like where they can find all like dead books and books that never were and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, this book appeared right before Mia came here. It was Nevernight, stupid name for a book. And it's the beginning lines of actual Nevernight. How fucking meta. And it goes, at the edges of the pages were stained blood red and a crow in flight was embossed in glossy black on the cover. You know what that describes? This freaking book right here. And it goes on to say, it has footnotes. What kind of wanker writes a novel with footnotes? It's not a novel, it's a biography about Mia. And it says, it's like the dead books and the lost books and the books that never were. Some burn on the pyres of the faithful, some swallowed by time, and others is simply too dangerous to write it all. That is so good. That is so good. Holy hell. And this is, I found another one about three months back. Okay, so that's like the end of God's grave. And it said it was similar to the one you already had, but the pages were edged in sky blue rather than blood red. And a wolf was embossed on the black cover instead of a crow. This one right here. I'm assuming they don't have dust jackets in this library. Written by? Mercurio of Lys. So now we know that Mercurio is our narrator. My guess was Mr. Kindly, but Mercurio makes so much sense because of all the snark. <laughs> oh my god! This is incredible. And like, I bet the end of this book, my prediction right now, is that we'll like see Dark Dawn popping up in the library. Uh, I, d I literally don't know what to think. This is on page 31 of the novel. What other book has ever been that meta? I don't know. Like, I literally, I'm speechless. I'm on page 31 and I'm speechless. I made it to page 93 and this is the start of book two. So I figured it's a good time to go to bed because I'm tired. So I was reading for like two hours and I went from page 14 to 95. So where I am, they are going to Akash and Mia confronted Skeva after learning that he is really her father, which we of course already knew and found out that he was a Darkin, which once they said that like he was her father, I definitely had a suspicion, but his passenger is the snake, which is on the US book cover. So people have theorized that Mia gets a new passenger that's a snake, so maybe she ends up killing him, I don't know, and then takes the passenger, we'll see. I mean, yeah, this is just such a phenomenal series. I'm in love with it. And I can't wait to see where it goes. I know the ending is gonna destroy me. I'm looking forward to it. 
Okay, it's Saturday night and I read for a little bit this morning and then I was doing like other booktube stuff, writing reviews, went to the gym and then I was just chilling, literally doing nothing for a while. I'm on page 135. I'm still reeling from the whole revelation about the moon last night. That is just so... Did I, did I talk about that on camera? I don't know if I did, but how basically like the moon fell from the sky and that is what the city of God's grave is actually a God's grave. So clever and that all the darken are different fragments of the soul of the moon and that's why they're all like drawn to each other and like they feel hungry around one another. It's so clever. It's so clever. So now I'm up to the part where they are going. Oh, and there's tension between Ashlyn and Trick because they both love it. Mia. And basically, like, in the book, Curio was talking about the book Nevernight and how Nevernight opens up saying that Mia will die. And he's like, okay, this book says that she's going to die. I don't want her to die, blah, blah, blah. It's so meta. Like, it is Inception, but on steroids. <sighs> However, I have a package from waterstones.com. It's here! Oh my goodness. It's the Waterstones edition. Oh my lanta. And there's Mr. Kindly on the cover. It's signed by Jake Kristoff. Oh, look at this. Oh, beautiful. Wow, I love this so much. Oh, and on the back it says, Oh, mother, blackest mother, what have I become? So cool. So this is my shelf. And so I have to add this copy. So, well, well, first of all, okay, let's talk about this. The fact that I have all three of these and look at the three suns on the spine. Oh my goodness. I like this. So we have Nevernight down here. And then this just fills up the space a little bit more. Mia just told Mr. Kindly to leave. And I'm very sad about it. Don't do that to Mr. Kindly. Right now I'm on page 198 and the book is 470 something pages. So the halfway mark is 230 or so pages. So my goal is it's like midnight now. So I'm going to read up to like the halfway point and then go to bed. Okay, hello. I just ended up filming my August wrap up, trying to be productive this Sunday, but at the same time, I have also been reading Dark Dawn. I thought maybe I would finish it this weekend. I don't think so. I still think I can get a good chunk done tonight, but not yet. I'm on page 272, and when I went to bed last night, I was on page like 230, so I read maybe 40 pages this morning, and oh my goodness. Well, okay, so she just became the pirate queen, which I'm like, oh my god, this book literally has everything. Um, this one line I really loved. Okay, well, first of all, there's some like, really funny quotes, like in this one, Mia goes, it ruined my murderous bitch aesthetic. <laughs> That's such a Mia quote. Okay, also, oh, ooh, I was so shocked because they found, they were like a leather bound book with a cat on the front and they found Dark Dawn in Dark Dawn. How meta is that? What the heck? You found Dark Dawn in Dark Dawn. So like, they found it, but like, it's happening right there. Crazy, crazy, ooh. It just got so meta and I love it. I love it. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, when she killed the pirate king, I was like, whoo, that was gruesome and I loved it. <clears throat> let's see what she says. She goes, my name is Mia Corvair, Blade of the Red Church, Champion of the Venitus Magni, Chosen of the Dark Mother and Queen of Scoundrels. She is an assassin, a gladiator, a pirate queen. Like, is there anything that Mia Corvair cannot do? I don't think so. Oh, and then, but now, now she just, what did you do? Oh, so Ashlyn was like, they separated to go their separate ways on the boat. And then Trick was like, Mia, I still love you. And she was like, I'm attracted to you, but I think I love Ashlyn. And I'm like, mm, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. 
what's gonna happen there's this tension between all of them and she like almost slept with trick and then she did it and it's crazy so the most badass thing just happened they were getting attacked on the ocean by the ladies of the oh 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 wait okay wait sorry i just got distracted by like a thing okay so she was just out on the ocean and then they were getting attacked by the four daughters well the two of them and they like she used eclipse and grabbed trick and just like shadow jumped all the way to shore what a badass scene and like this is the way that it looks so it is just such a clever use of spacing. I love it to show that she's stepping through the shadows. Like that is art, that is art. And then and she says, still standing bitches. Look at what I wrote, like, if it would focus. <laughs> I love it so much. And now we're on book four. So, okay, I'm concerned now because see this font change? That is the font that is used for when they are reading the book in the book. So now I'm thinking like this is the, an excerpt from Dark Dawn in Dark Dawn. So like I don't know what that really means, but like this is definitely like something to keep note of. So I don't know like how long. I don't know. And, but it seems like flipping forward that the font changes back. So like to me, the fact that like it's book four, which is called The Ashes of Empires is starting like Mercurio or someone is reading it. So I don't know. So I'm gonna take a break right now to do like some journaling and stuff. So I'm gonna come back to this later, but I am so intrigued. This is so well done. There's just so much to unpack and I know like I can go back and reread this series later and I feel like I'd pick up so much more and I just love when there's a series that you can reread it and get something more because you can pick up on so much and it's just so clever and I love like thinking about it <laughs> when I'm not reading it. Hello, it's now Monday and I'm about to head to the gym but I just couldn't stop thinking about Dark Dawn all day today and how excited I was to go home and read it and just I'm in my feels about this series. <sighs> Am I gonna finish it tonight? I don't know. I still have like, let's see. I'm on book four. So not any further than where I was yesterday. I'm on page 296. We'll see. So I just read the first chapter of part four and that's when it's in the different font so like then you find out that they're actually reading the book so in this like excerpt she comes into the mountain and just kills everyone and you're like yeah badass and then they're like oh yeah like you know it says that she was supposed to die and they're like yeah after a long and happy life in bed and i know that like jay krasoff specifically put that in there to be like, yeah, you thought that maybe I would end it this way and just be like, haha, but no, like, I re she's really gonna die by the end of this, I bet. I bet, like, she's not gonna live a long and happy life. But I feel like he's poking fun at people that tease that for it to only end up being that. Like, I don't think it's going to be that at all. So I'm excited. So now that they know, like, how it would work and they're talking about, like, how the novel, like, constantly changes, it's not set in stone. So I don't know, like, how the the book will work out in the, this book. It's very cool to think about. I'm, you know, gonna keep reading. I probably won't get too much reading done tonight. I only read like 10 pages so far. I, I've read like 10 pages so far. <laughs> okay, no, I've read like 15 pages. I hopefully will hit like, I'll read at least 50 pages tonight and then I'll go to bed. And then I'll read more, but yeah, I just can't read as much on the weekdays, especially for a book that just takes so long to absorb everything. So, it turns out that that excerpt, that ex I can't say that word, excerpt from the third book that they found was fake and a list 
wrote it, so it's not the real Dark Dawn. Very clever, we were all played, and that's how they laid their plans to get Mia into the mountain, and that's just so clever, because I was like, wait, this is a little bit like too, like book within a book, that is a changing, but it's fake. So, it's still a part of like, the book. <laughs> And then, now oh, I'm so sad because there was this whole fight in the mountain and she killed most of the ministry, but Eclipse was destroyed by the Snake Whisper. Poor Eclipse. And Jonan went back with his father, but he's like only nine, so like, you know, if you're nine, that's probably what I would have done too. And then, so there's this line and Spider Killer goes, I swore vengeance against Mia Corvair and vengeance now I have, so if you feel mind to see us safely down to speaker's chambers i'll tell the tale of how i've killed your daughter for you so like i bet she poisoned her somehow there's so many things going on i'm on page 342 so i have like a little oh yeah i think a little bit over 100 pages left we'll see where i get to but like this book is just top tier it's so good okay it's wednesday september 11th and i'm sitting down to try and finish this book so yesterday I didn't get to read too much. I got to page 384. Oh, except like something dramatic happened and I didn't talk about it, but Ashlyn just died and I like didn't think it was actually gonna happen and then it did. And then Skava ate all the shadows in God's grave, like the blood, which is the moon's rage. And I'm just like curious as to how this is all going to play out especially because there was a line um i should have highlighted it as foreshadowing so she had the dream where she talked to naya and she's like you need to give me a reason for me to actually do this and she goes i can think of a few reasons child and then it cuts off so i'm trying to think like what the reasons would be and how that's going to play out Oh, I also really liked Jonan was with Skeva and I have this line I highlighted. It said, besides it sat a stiletto crafted of gray bone, Jonan saw a crow on the hilt with red amber eyes. It seemed a little brother to the long blade Mia carried. So like, obviously the stiletto is meant for Jonan and hopefully he takes it in the future. Yeah, so I have about 100 pages. I can't believe it's only 100 pages until I find out how it all ends and I might just stay up late and uh, read it all and be sad so i am on page 408 which is the end of book four and she just got to the crown of the moon and it's literally the skull which like should have known because in the map the skull is in the middle so it's literally like god's grave is created from like everything of the moon and then his skull is like way over in that other part of the world so um Let's see how this goes. It's the final book. It's called She Wore the Night. I don't know what that means, but I'm afraid. So much is happening. Okay, so I'm on page 423 now. Mia just had her confrontation with Cleo. So badass. And then all of a sudden, we see that Mr. Kindly was with Cleo. I'm waiting for Mia to get there and just... Ah... Basically, basically, and now she has the power of the god within her, and they're talking about moonlight, and this is intense. So, everything is happening at once, and it's very intense, and I'm going to keep reading, but I needed to stop to say that Ashlyn just came back from the dead because Trick died and showed her the way back from the abyss. I can't, I can't, I can't, oh my god. I literally only have like 20 pages left. What is gonna happen? I finished. And I'm sad. <laughs> oh. Oh my God, that ending, literally. <laughs> I'm just in shock. It ended so beautifully. The last like a hundred pages were just such a wild ride and like in the end she fought her father and won and he was like the rage and all the like ugly stuff in the world and ugh, she beat him and then 
now Jonin is the last Darken, but like he is more powerful because Anais is living again and they had one tithe left so they brought Mia back to life and now her and Ash are undead and living together forever and ever. And then the last line of the book where well, the last like line of the actual like book was it she said, I'm gonna be with you forever. Mia whispered just forever. Ashley murmured, Mia smiled on the silver light forever and ever. And then the last book of that like other part that comes after is never flinch, never fear, never ever forget. Oh that was so good. <laughs> what are emotions? <sighs> Okay, Maddie is almost done. I need her to finish so that I can talk to her. Can't believe we're actually finishing at the same time. This never happens. The mind you must have to create something like this blows me away. I just need to deal with my emotions a little bit because what, like literally what the fuck. Hello, so it's Saturday, September 14th now, and I finished Dark Dawn on Wednesday, and I've just kind of been thinking about my thoughts, but I wanted to come and close out the vlog. I got my Mr. Kindly Cat ears on, and just talk about like the end of the book and when I thought about it. I really enjoy doing this form of a reading vlog where it almost feels like a book talk as the book is happening. As the book is happening, I kind of get to like think my theories, and now kind of at the end, do like not a full book talk, but just my thoughts. So I, of course, thought this ending was so beautiful. I, I really, really thought that we were going to get a not happy ending. I think it's bittersweet with a little bit more sweet because in the end, Mia and Ash end up together. They're both brought back to life because Mia sacrificed herself for restoring the balance between light and day and Trick died so that he could teach Ashlyn how to come back from the abyss so he, she could be it with Mia and that is just so heartwarming and then we also find out that jonan is going to be a still a darken but like also like a blood magician because now that the moon is restored the magic is back and marielle is like no longer ugly so that's nice and then in the end Merc mercurio is writing nevernight chronicles because i'm pretty sure that they were destroyed when the library was on fire but now he's like sitting down and like actually writing them and i just think it wrapped up just so so nicely oh and we learned out that cloud corleone's name is benefazio <laughs> Which is just funny because Mia was guessing like the whole book and it of course is like a very funny name I just thought that this is such a masterfully crafted unique powerful story Like I just have a lot of thoughts and feelings. It's so good. It's so fantastic I just thought it wrapped up perfectly like It's funny because like in the beginning you are put in this world like when you're reading the Nevernight Chronicles, right, and you hear about the three sons, you're like, oh, like this is just part of the lore of the world. But it ends up being so important in the end. Like, that is what Mia is drawn to. And I definitely want to reread these. I think I will pick up on so much more foreshadowing. It just makes so much sense. And it, I don't know. I just feel like I can't gather my thoughts and be, like, eloquent enough to say how much I loved it. But it was perfect. I also really enjoyed annotating my copy. I literally went through, like, two things of tabs with all of them it's so fun to annotate and i actually like wrote in it at some points which sometimes i annotate and underline when i don't necessarily write my comments in but there are some choice comments that i want to show off that i wrote oh so when we find out that mercurio writes the nevernight chronicles and he says holy shit i wrote holy shit indeed and i tweeted that out to jake Kristoff, and he retweeted it which is cool and then oh i wrote when when it's like here um when it's talking about like how the pages were stained blood red so that's basically like the nevernight gold bro edition and i wrote jay Kristoff is a fucking genius because he is this whole series is just amazing like i could never come up with something like this i love how he made fun of his own footnotes too that is so funny oh and then here i wrote like when she was having a flashback scene to the end of God's grave they were like a quote from the end of God's grave and they were talking about how there was a sphere of ghostly white in the sky I wrote the moon because that's what it was referring to oh I really really loved the scene at the end when we're with the gods and the Anias the moon comes and like squishes the two eyes of of awe and like 
closes the two suns so that there's only one sun and then the night and light are restored to balance. Oh yeah, when when they find out that the crown of the moon is actually like the skull, I drew in a little skull. I'm like, oh, that's how did I not think that the crown of the moon was like going to be its head? Like it's very obvious because in the map, there's literally a, a skull right in the middle. It's just, it's just genius. I love the series so much. I have like an undying love for the Nevernight Chronicles and thank you Jay Kristoff for writing such an amazing series. I think it wrapped up so nicely and it's just so much fun to read. There's so much to it. I love it a lot. And with that, I'm going to close out this video. So have a fun, read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.